was released from Guantanamo Bay. The Times says the Brexit Secretary David Davis has declared that the UK will keep its doors open for low-skilled European workers after Brexit. Guardian also leads on Brexit, reporting how city bankers say the potential loss of jobs to the rest of Europe could threaten financial stability. And could the England football captain Wayne Rooney be heading to China? The Mirror has a report that he could be leaving Manchester United. And the Mail leads with how that suspected jihadi terrorist pocketed taxpayers' money after accusing MI6 agents of being complicit in his mistreatment at the hands of the Americans. And actually, we're going to kick off with the uh, Daily Mail because they've got that story that most of the front pages have got. The IS suicide bomber, you paid, you, the British mm -hmm. taxpayer, paid a million pounds. Yeah, uh, this guy was a web designer from Manchester. Then uh, he, he was held in Guantanamo. It claimed that he was unfairly held, was released and was paid a million pounds. Mm. I think the payment was to avoid having to pay more if they'd actually gone to court. It was mm. some kind of settlement. And now he's ended up being filmed as an IS suicide mm. bomber. So you wonder if that £1 million has gone to IS somehow. Yes. And, and, and the reason British taxpayers paid was he claimed that the MI6, MI6 was yeah. uh, um, involved in what happened to him at Guantanamo. Mm. And it seems, according to the story here, that the Tony Blair government was also involved in pressurising for his release and making mm. the payment. Well, well, it does raise questions about why he wasn't monitored. Yeah. Even after he was paid, yes, fair enough, whether the payment was justified or not, it's a different matter. But given his record, he should really have been monitored. How, how did they allow him to sort of, if you like, have the second life and do what he's done? And does it also raise questions about those who campaigned on his behalf? Mm. Well, it does. Uh, I mean, I suppose they would argue that they couldn't have known what he was going to do in the future. But uh, all the front pages are, are pretty much covering this story, and it, it will sit not mm. very well with a lot, of, a lot of taxpayers, and you can understand yeah. why. Ronald Fiddler was his original mm. British name before That's he changed right. his name. He's he had more than one name, I think. Yes. Uh, all right. Uh, but it's a horrible picture of him, mm. like, smiling just as he's about to blow mm. himself and yeah. so many other people are. Exactly, just, just at the moment of his suicide bombing, yes. Um, let's go on to the uh, Brexit story in The Times. They say uh, Britain will stay open to EU migrants. This is David Davis, the Brexit secretary. And, and, and Ros, you've been talking in the House of Lords, actually, today on, on Brexit, on, right. on, on the, the bill to trigger Article 50. And I'll be rushing back for the, for the closing as well. But basically... It, it seems that we need EU immigrants, and this is something that David Davis is now admitting, you know, in sectors such as social care and in agriculture, in the NHS, in lots of areas. We need EU workers to come and do jobs that aren't being filled and won't be filled by British workers. But I guess one of the questions here is, if we do need immigration and we're not going to stop it anyway, what was the whole Brexit mm. thing about? Uh, and a lot of people, I think, will be asking that. And that was one of the questions I was raising in the House today. How are you going to vote on the bill? Well, we'll have to see. And there's amendments coming up in the committee stage next week. Ultimately, it's the House of Commons who will have the final decision. But I think what uh, a number of uh, people in the House of Lords are saying is that p maybe the government isn't quite ready. We had a white paper which doesn't really have any costed plans, so we're not quite sure what all this Brexit is actually going to mean, and maybe we shouldn't rush too quickly. OK. Here is it. But what's interesting is listening, uh, reading what David Davis has said, he's made a great case for immigration. I mean, he should be the immigration minister. I, he <laughs> has, the, the arguments he presents about the hospitality sector and so on. And also it's very interesting that the president of the um, NFU, the National Farmers Union, has said that um, if, if um, farm workers and so on don't come, you know, seasonal workers, we might have um, great difficulty mm. in getting food. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, th th this is one of the issues that we're going to have to deal with as we move forward with, with Brexit, you know, that uh, we do need certain jobs to be done and there are uh, immigrants who are doing them. We've got an ageing population, lots of older workers, but they're not going to be able to do these kind of jobs. But you have so many members in the House of Lords. Maybe, you know, you can't get seats. We'll go down and start <laughs> picking the crops. That's a good <laughs> idea. You, but if it comes to amending the, the bill that's going through, 
Parliament at the moment. Do you think it's right that the Lords can do that? Because some people say the people voted in the referendum, the Commons passed it without amendment, the House of Lords doesn't have a right, really, to change or amend it if the Commons didn't. Actually, I don't... don't agree with that. In fact, that is precisely the role of the House of Lords, which is if you think that the Commons has done something that is a bit hasty or that hasn't been fully thought through, you can send it back and say, maybe you should think again about these particular issues. Uh, and that's you what has been done. You can't the will of the people. Well, it, we don't make the final decision. The House of Lords can send it back to the Commons and say, maybe you should think again on that. The Commons can then think again and send it back to us and say, no, we've thought again. And actually, we think we were right in the first place. But would place. you actually vote against the bill, against triggering Article 50? I, I think if you send it back and the Commons sends it back again to us, then that's the final decision and we, we wouldn't have a right then. It's not the role of the House of Lords to overturn a Commons decision, but it is the role of the Lords to say, we're scrutinising this, we're advising that maybe we need to, or have you thought about these issues and perhaps you should mm. think about them again. And Mihir, it's interesting, isn't it, because uh, Emmanuel Macron, who's the French mm. presidential candidate, some people are saying, you know, mm. he's got a pretty good chance of winning. He's been in London today. He went to Downing Street. Theresa May agreed to see him. Actually, I think Angela Merkel didn't mm. want to see him because he's a candidate. But he, you wonder whether... She's thinking that perhaps if he's president, French president, he's the man that she'll be dealing with on the Brexit negotiations in part. Yes, and she's looking for having the right bridges, you know. And we don't know how hard the negotiations will be. All the signs are it'll be very hard if he does get in um, to the Elysee Palace. It'll be, it'll be nice to have somebody she can talk to. Um, and, and it's very interesting, his, his motive for coming here, he's made noises about um, uh, trying to um, uh, get people back, to go back to Paris and so on, even, even tempting um, um, uh, uh, British people to go and work in France and, of course, appealing to the French voters here. There are lots of French voters here. I think about there two are. million or something? No, I don't no, think. 300,000. 300,000. Yeah. But there's still a lot, several hundred thousand. Obviously worth him coming over. Well, he needs to, all to the votes he can get, yes. that's in right. A, in a narrow <laughs> election, it might, might make a difference. Yeah, and he was, uh, he was making a speech to them tonight in Westminster. Yeah. He's, he's also... Uh, saying in France that he's not going to be terribly kind to Britain in the negotiations, but I guess he would have to say that because yes. the, the French don't want him to sort of say, oh, we're going to give Britain a great deal. All right, well, let's, let's talk about the Telegraph's uh, front page, which is the continuing story about um, business rates and looking like some indications that there could be some sort of climb down by the government on this whole issue of uh, business rates. Well, it's, it's not clear because... What's happening here is there's a bit of a tussle between Sajid Javid and Philip Hammond. Mm. Um, so Sajid Javid from the local government's department sent out some information which misled perhaps MPs a little bit into believing that the rate rises weren't going to be as big as they are actually mm. going to be. Uh, and Philip Hammond is now coming under pressure to ease some of those rate rises or offset some of the costs on but small this, business. But this could be a bit of a, 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 a rerun of the poll tax, though, of course, the poll tax affected um, individual uh, uh, families and so on. Uh, and it's quite interesting. If you read the story, there's a suggestion that both sides, Philip Hammond and Sajid David, have, have brief reporters because um, there's, a, there's a line here about friends of Sajid David, right. which, which always sounds like the minister talking. Yeah. Um, it usually off is. the record, it usually uh, is. saying he has been the fall guy in this. <laughs> he's he's been made to appear as if he has imposed these um, rate rises and so on. But but this affects, uh, I would have thought, the Tory heartland. Surely, mm. yeah, most of the people who are going to pay these high rates will be Tory party supporters. Yeah, the and are they not likely to defect to UKIP? They won't defect to Labour. Mm. But uh, well, we we don't know. But I think one of the problems here is that rates haven't been changed in this way for mm. nearly 10 years. Mm. So there's the big catch up between the, the high property price rises that we've had over the last 10 years and the amount of rates that small shopkeepers are paying. But with retail ha coming under pressure from the online yes. mm. businesses, squeezed completely. this is a real yeah. blow. Uh, and I think we're seeing, for example, that around a, a quarter of small shopkeepers have ended up in court because they haven't been able to afford paying their rates. Mm. So 
we do have a, a real issue and maybe the Chancellor is going to do something about Except, it in the Well, budget. maybe he is, but although there's a quote from him saying uh, that he's told MPs there is no pot mm. of money mm. under my desk. <laughs> yeah, so he'll have to find the money from somewhere else rather than just... Maybe saying, oh, behind well, the go. sofa, but it's not under his desk. That's all, that's all we know for sure from the Chancellor. Uh, OK, the Mirror. Uh, well, Mihir, uh, as, as a former BBC sports editor, I'm sure you'd like to talk about <laughs> Wayne Rooney possibly going to China as early as next week even. Mm, and, and getting 30 million. So, I mean, this is, of course, part of China's declared policy of becoming a great football power within about 10 years. They're attracting players. What they're doing is they're targeting players who are coming towards the end of their career and who've decided, when Rooney may have decided if he's going, and the story is true, that um, there's not much for him to go on playing for Manchester United or even go on playing for England. So why? He probably has another year. Why doesn't he make a pot of money? And if it helps the Chinese, the only... Pro I mean, the, these players, of course, will profit in enormously, whoever is targeted, Wayne Rooney and the others. But whether that will make China mm. a world power in football is a totally different matter. Because at the end of the day, the Chinese have got to find their own mm. players That's to right. be able to play against the world. And my favourite story of the day, um, Ross, I don't know if you were watching the Sutton United <laughs> Arsenal game last night. Possibly not. I think you were in the Lords. Uh, otherwise, course, you would have yes. been. But the, the Sutton United goalkeeper, Wayne Shaw, um, who was pictured... He's in that <laughs> yeah, like but he had a bet on it, or yeah. rather, he uh, he encouraged fans to bet on it, and somebody offered eight to one. Sun bets the, um, so obviously there was some sort of an well, that, understanding. Of but offense, I think this has been it? blown up into. I mean, clearly there's no suggestion that in eating the pie he affected the result of the match. I mean, is that why the the sudden shot hit the hit the post and didn't go in, or something <laughs> like that? I mean, this is. I think this well, is. Well, it both might have the, put some of the players <laughs> off. I must say. No, I think this is both the FA and the the gambling body becoming. I think a bit too officious about this. Right. I mean, obviously, you've got to stop um, the sort of betting scandals we, are, we have had, not, not in, in this country, but elsewhere. But, you know, eating a pie and, and having a bet on it, I mean, I mean, you know, this is getting quite ridiculous. He's a pretty chunky goalkeeper, isn't he? He's sort of 20-odd he, stone, I think. Yes. I know, he's probably and, quite and he, good at stopping the ball getting in the net. But <laughs> He doesn't have to do anything, just stands there. <laughs> And 46 years of age. So, uh, but he well, is the reserve keeper, <laughs> or was the reserve keeper anyway. Um, uh, OK, well, that, that's uh, the Sun's front page, hung out to pie, a classic Sun <laughs> pun there. And, uh, well, the Times, From Boris the Johnson. Line, Boris Johnson, what can one say? I mean, if there's he a fake... He looks like he's, he's had a pie or two <laughs> before he's... I mean, maybe that's the real story. How many pies did Boris Johnson have? And how many bets were there on Boris Johnson having a pie? I want to know what's happened to his, his legs. I mean, he looks yes, like he he's looks... been in some kind of battle with somebody maybe or other. Maybe he's putting himself in the frame to, yeah. be, to be recruited by the Chinese to play football. Or, or perhaps <laughs> he could be Sutton United's new reserve yeah, goalkeeper. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. absolutely. What do you think? <laughs> he's... he's He's, he's advertising himself that he can eat a lot of pies and, you know, <laughs> he, he can easily stop a goal or two. But well, I think rugby you, is his game, not football. Ross, what do you think of his um, choice of um, running wear? Well, you kind of <laughs> Looks like swimming trunks, don't they? his pyjamas or something, but I, I guess his hat matches his, his shorts to some degree. That's about all you can say, really, yeah. from and a what's sartorial he listening point to? of view. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite a look. It's quite a look. Well, very fetching, shall we say. <laughs> Fantastic. Great to have you both with us. Um, I'll let you dash back Thank to the you. Lords. What, what time do you finish tonight? Midnight, is it? Well, that's I what think. they were telling us. Yeah, so, OK, you better get your skates on. I will. Uh, thank you so much for being with us. Thank uh, you. Uh, that is it from the papers tonight. Don't forget you can see the front pages of the papers online on the BBC News website. That's all there for you seven days a week at bbc.co.uk forward slash papers. And if you miss the programme any evening of the week, you can watch it later on uh, BBC iPlayer. But for the moment, thank you very much to Ros and to me here in the studio. That's it from us. Goodbye. Thank you.